Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on use ratios and right triangles. This was requested by YouTube Studio, a commenter. He's been here a couple times. He's keeping me in business with all these requests, but I appreciate it. This one's a ge uh, geometry concept on uh, trigonometry, essentially. But anyway, it gives us some background on these ratios here. And essentially what it is, it's talking about the this one adjacent over hypotenuse that is cosine whoops that's my wrong writing utensil this one is cosine okay then it's talking about opposite over hypotenuse that is sine and then we have opposite over adjacent and that is tangent okay and these are more often written like this okay but i just wrote sine first so you don't think i'm writing sin that's a kind of a pet peeve of mine but anyway so we have these different ratios here and we know one way to remember it is Sokotoa. You may have remembered that. I would check out some of those trigonometry videos I have, but this, this is kind of an understanding that you know the trigonometric ratios, okay? Adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, and uh, opposite over adjacent, okay? Now, with that in mind, we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to look at this triangle, and it says use the table to approximate this angle. So we want to find out what this angle is, okay? Is it 55, was it 65 or 75? Okay, so those three. And you may get stuck at this, like, well, how do I figure out what that angle is? It doesn't give me, an, it gives me a 90 degree angle and that's it. So how do I figure that out um, with such little information? I'm just trying to line up. There we go, got it on the green. Now, it does give us some information about the sides though. And that's the whole point of geometry uh, in trigonometry is we get these sides. And this one's 67.7, this one's six. 6.7. <laughs> it's late. And then we have this angle here. Okay. So the first thing we always have to do when we're doing trig, the first step, number one is we want to label the sides. Okay. What do I mean by that? Well, we want to label the hypotenuse. We want to label the opposite side and adjacent side in regard to our desired angle. So our desired angle, I already highlighted in green. So we should label these in green. So our opposite side is always the side. Well, let's start with the hypotenuse, actually. Hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle, okay? It's always going to be opposite, meaning it doesn't touch the 90 degree angle, okay? It's it's the longest side. Opposite, I always like to do this. Some students get confused on opposite. I just draw an arrow from the angle pointing to it. Usually that works with most students, but some don't like it. So it's the side that doesn't touch the angle. Then we have the opposite side. And then we have the adjacent side right here. Okay, since we don't have any information about the adjacent side, we don't really need to use it for this problem. So we're going to stick with the opposite side and the hypotenuse because that's all we have information on. Now, because of those two measurements that we're going to use, we need to pick a trig function that uses those two measurements, opposite and hypotenuse. And there's only one, the sine. Okay, so we are going to look at these different signs up here. Okay, so which one is sine? Oops. Uh, sine is this middle one, okay? You can see here, even though I got a lot of stuff on the screen, sine is mid middle one. So we have our three ratios, 0 0.82, 0 0.97, 0 0.91, and 0 0.97. I'm saying these things backwards. Okay, so what do I need to do? Well, I need to set up a ratio, okay? I know that the sine of angle D, so I'm going to put sine of angle D is going to be equal to my opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so we have opposite over hypotenuse. Now I know what the, and that's, hold on, I should really have gone back one step here. The sine of any angle, and usually you call it theta. That just stands for angle, okay? So sine of angle D is what we're really interested in, and we know that's going to be equal to our opposite side, 6.1, over our hypotenuse, 6.7. So you will need a calculator for this portion, or you just have to be really good at dividing. Uh, I'm just going to use a calculator. hope you guys don't mind. So 6.7, and then this is equal to 0.91, okay? One of my least favorite things is when I use a calculator, students are like, oh, aren't you a math teacher? It's like, yes, I am, but I'm also a human being. I'm not a robot. So there's some guys on YouTube that are like, they can do that in their head, not me. Sorry. So look, I'm trying to find this 0.91, and right here I see it lines up with 65 degrees. So I know it's a 65 degree angle because it has the same ratio for the opposite to the hypotenuse as all 65 degree angled right triangles. So I'm going to check it. It's going to be right, and we'll go on to the next question. Okay, now we got the basics of it. Let's go on to this next one. Oh, this one is different. Right triangles, one, two, three, are given with all their angle measurements and approximate side lengths. Okay, cool. Got it. Use one of the triangles to approximate the ratio AC over AB. Okay, so clearly 
I'm just trying to match this up with uh, different triangles. And the big hint there is the 55, and I see there's only one 55 there, and it's that one. Okay, so I need to go and see this one. I need these measurements, and I'm going to use my little screen here. Okay, now here's my right angle. I have 5.7, then we're at 55 there, 8.2, and 10. Okay, because I'm just going to reference this as I scroll down. Okay, so it's saying um, I need to approximate the ratio of BC over AB. Okay, so let's figure out... This is kind of annoying because we <laughs> we have to figure out uh, which angle we're referencing. So there's my 55. I'm going to match it up with my purple. And now I need to kind of draw out the, the sides I'm looking for. So AB, I'm going to make green. AB is here. Okay. And notice how that's my hypotenuse. Okay. So this is my hypotenuse. So AB is in reference to 10. We're going to use that ratio later. Then I need to find my BC. BC is here. Okay, so BC right there, it's the opposite side. So here's my opposite side right there for 55. Okay, so I need to know BC, my opposite side. Okay, 8.2. That's equal to BC, the same proportion because we're comparing you know similar triangles here. If they have the same angles, they have similar triangles. So 55, 55, similar triangles. Over AB, okay, we know that's 10. And there I go. I just have to divide this, and then that's going to give me my ratio. So pretty simple here. I just got to go 8.2 divided by 10, and we know we can just move the decimal place over one place. Okay, 8.2 divided by 10 is 0.82. Check it. Moving on. Okay, so far so great. Again, same problem. We have three triangles. We just have to figure out which one we're using. We're looking for the 50-degree one, and there's only one. It's the 6.4, and I can keep it on the same screen, which is great. Okay. And first thing I want to do is highlight my reference angle. I had the steps there started, but I didn't finish it. So when you're doing trig, we label, okay? And then we find our reference angle. That's that's a really important. Ah, actually we label after our reference angle. So here's one reference, two is label, okay? So here we have our reference angle and we can label the sides from there. So we have opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay, this is probably a better way to do it. And then here's our 50 degree angle here. And then we can label these sides again. Here's a hypotenuse. Here's our opposite side. And this is our adjacent side. Okay. We want to approximate PQ in the triangle below. So PQ is the opposite side. Okay. We're going to set up our proportion here. We're going to do this probably a little bit different than when I normally do it. Okay. So a proportion we could say is we know that this hypotenuse, I'm going to label it, I'm going to color it red and color this one red. I'm going to color this one green, this uh, opposite side. Okay, because that's what I'm looking for is this opposite side. So I'm going to say my opposite side, 7.7 .7 from this top triangle, it's a similar triangle because so it's a 50 degree, 50 degree angle. Okay, we already talked about that. Over, what is it? 10. Okay, so we know that's going to be equal to. And then we don't know this side. I'm going to call it X. You can call it P if you wanted. I'm just, I like calling it X. Okay. So sue me. And then I put it over seven because that's over its hypotenuse. So again, I, I'm comparing opposite side to hypotenuse for both this top triangle and this bottom triangle. And then from here, I'm just going to cross multiply and divide. So I get 10X equals 7.7 .7 times seven. There we go. That's a nice little rhyme there. We get 53.9. Type that on my calculator. And I divide this by 10. I'm going to move that decimal place over. I get x equals 5.39. That should be down here as an answer. And we're going to round here, obviously, 5.4. Okay. Last question. Again, it's like just like the first one we had. Use the table to approximate gh in the triangle. Okay. So we have 65 degrees here. Okay. This one's kind of like the reverse of the first one. We got every problem type, which is great. Okay, so then if you're stuck on one of these, you can just fast forward or rewind um, to each problem that you need. So here we have 65 degrees, and where am I? Okay, so I know we're going to be using either this, this, or this. Again, this was sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay, so the first thing I need is I need my reference angle. Okay, let's get out my reference angle. Boom, there's my reference angle. Next up, I need to label my sides. I have opposite. I have adjacent. Okay, adjacent always touches the angle, it forms that in the hypotenuse, which is opposite the 90 degree angle, okay? Always form the reference angle. The opposite side doesn't touch the reference angle. I, I don't think I said that earlier. So if I label the sides and you didn't know what I was doing, I apologize. So we have um, 
are adjacent, locked in, okay? And we're looking for which one? We're looking for GH. So we want to know this one, okay? So which trig function uses adjacent and opposite? Again, we don't have information on the opposite, but we want to know it. We do have the angle, but we want to know the opposite. So we are going to use something that incorporates adjacent and opposite, and that is this one, opposite adjacent. That is tangent. Okay, that one was tangent. And we know that's 2.14. So how do I set this up? Well, I know the tangent of an angle, let me go back to the basics, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, a little sloppy, sorry. So I know the angle, the angle is 60, the angle, this, the angle is 65 degrees, and that's equal to x, I don't know the opposite side, over my adjacent side, 3. I know what tangent of 65 is. It tells us in the chart that is 2.14, and that's still x over 3. What I like to do from here, always, 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 I put it over 1. I think that's the easiest way to do it because sometimes x is in the denominator, and then I cross multiply. Okay, put it over 1. Then I cross multiply. So I have 2.14 times 3 on one side. And then I have x times 1, which is just x. So I just do 2.14 times 3, and I get 6.42. So now I have my side length, and it's 6.42. And I'm going to round down to 6.4, and we're done. That's all there is to it. That's the basis of trigonometry. If you guys can get that, you are set for inverse trig. That should be an easy step for you. Um, regular trig, Pythagorean theorem, you got it all from here, okay? Thanks again, uh, YouTube Studio, for requesting this video. Thanks for watching. If you want your own video, request one, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.